Hi, and welcome to another edition of Heal Speak Radio. I'm Lana Monday Emmett, and I'm here with Dawn Green today, CEO of the Napoleon Hill Foundation. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Lana. How are you? I'm doing well. You doing okay? I'm doing fine. I have not had a makeup person with me today. Me either. <laughs> so I understand you've got some publications you're going to tell us about. Yeah, I mean, th this one's real interesting to me. It is. Uh, it's success through a positive mental attitude. It was uh, co-authored with uh, Napoleon Hill, who we know wrote Think and Grow Rich, and also W. Clement Stone. And uh, it's, it's very interesting. It's published with Simon Schuster. It's also on audio and uh, ebook and so forth. But the book's printed by Simon Schuster. It was co copyright 1960, which if that tells me right, that's about 59 years ago. The book is still in print, been in continuous print. And a uh, simple question to other readers is, how many books you know has been in continuous print that long? I could think of one right off, right off, which is, of course, Think and Grow Rich right. and those other books. But uh, the book, it's a fantastic book. And, and what's more important, it still sells real well today. So uh, it's available on Amazon. Okay. Simon Schuster is also an audio book and an e-book. But this was the first book that Mr. Stone wrote. He co-wrote it with Napoleon Hill. Wow. Success to a positive mental attitude. And as you know, Mr. Stone was real big on that. Uh, oh, PMA all the way. PMA. I know who people and have it on their front tag. Uh, Absolutely. It's so, on my desk. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a terrific topic because as, as uh, we have, William James uh, told us that uh, of the importance of a positive attitude. Uh, and even Einstein said it was more important than intelligence or attitude. But lots of people have spoken well. It's a very uh, important trait if you're going to be successful. Absolutely. And then later, Mr. Stone was connected with, uh, with the Napoleon Hill Foundation. Uh, from 52 up until the time he passed away at age 100. He, he, co he authored two books on his own. This is the first, this is one of them. Uh, this is called Believe and Achieve. And it's his, it's, it's his take on the 17 principles of success. But this is his book. It's published with my good friends at Sound Wisdom. You can buy it on Amazon or uh, wherever good books are sold. And if you've not read this book, I would uh, recommend it highly. Mr. Stone wrote one other book, also published with Sound Wisdom. It's called A Success System That Never Fails. And what he's telling you in this thing is if you do what the book tells you to do, you'll succeed. And uh, he's, an, exe he's an, an example of someone who understands his responsibility to help mankind and his shared his life experiences, financial means, and skill with the greatest number of people. That quote comes from Napoleon Hill. And that's good enough to, just Napoleon Hill word is good enough to read the book. Absolutely. Very, very well worth reading to understand where Mr. Stone was coming from. And that's available at Amazon too, right? Yes, and published with Sound Wisdom. Great. We have several books today. I'm going to talk to you. At, uh, at, uh, the publisher is our good friends at Sound Wisdom. Here's a nice copy of A Master Key to Riches. Now, this book's been around a long time. It was it was printed in 19, published in 1945, and it's a, it's a good book. The last uh, so many years, it's only been available in paperback. But if you're like I am, and most devout readers. Nothing takes the place of a nice hardback. Oh, if I agree. Something about a nice hardback as a gift. I don't think you'd want to give a little paperback to someone in honor of their accomplishments, like finishing high school or finishing college or getting a new job. And uh, this uh, this book would do it. It's a nice little book. Oh, especially right now because you know so many students are getting ready for graduation, especially college graduation. Yes, and I think it's one of the books that people don't give away. You know, we right. read these detective and love stories or whatever, whatever reading is. And once you read them, not much reason to go back and read them again. 
but not so on self-help books. And self-help books allow us to write our own ending to our own life if we practice what we learn. And as people like Mr. Stone tell us, it's action and um, take an action on what you've learned and what you've applied. Right. Good book to have, a good book to give away. The second book I want to talk to you about is a nice hardback master. This one's a master. Oh, that's master. a good one, too, that people should buy the set. They should buy them both. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they're, they're kind of designed alike. This was Hill's second book uh, at the start of the Depression. And, and I will tell you, it did not sell because I think the, the rumor is a printer went broke. It was not a lot of them printed. It's a real, real, real rare book. Mm -hmm. I only a few of them around. And uh, of course, we happen to have one in our archives, and this is an exact reproduction of that 1930. And what it amounts to is, if you don't have time to go back and read the thousand pages of Law of Success, I would call this a summary of the Law of Success. It covers each one of the uh, principles up to up to that time, and it's a good read, put to, put together put together excellent, and it's and it's an exact copy of the of the book he did. Uh, and uh, it's got some additions to it, like in the end, unique ways for making money, and some of the 30 most common causes of failure, and, and so forth. And I think you'll enjoy it. this one, if you don't own it, make a nice part of the library. Absolutely. It's by Sound Wisdom, available on Amazon, or as I was going to, for Germany, going through the airport in Atlanta, they, they had this, and uh, the Think and Grow Rich and the Master Key to Riches stacked up on the shelves, and I was able to get a few pictures of them as I was passing through. Good book. That's always got to be nice when you see that, when you're in the airport. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you know, you know, you go in there and see, the, see quite a few of your uh, uh, books and talk to the the clerks that's in there, and they, and they tell you, and then I say, and I usually have some comment like, uh, hey, if you keep reading these books, one day you'll own your own bookstore for yep. what you yep. And it happens there's a story of uh, Riccio that uh, Barnes and Nobles, I met with him when he published uh, Outwit and the Devil and Three Feet from Gold with us. It's uh, the publishing army of Sterling. And um, he read the books at a young age. His father was a Italian emerald guy, but he worked in a bookstore. He always owned a bookstore. So he ended up with Barnes and Nobles today, but he was inspired by the book Think and Grow Rich. And you know, there you hear that a lot. I mean, that is not an uncommon story. Um, yeah, from people like uh, every day I hear stories, whether it be Steve Harvey or Billy Ray Cyrus, or mm -hmm. this goes on and on and on. That people how they was influenced by the book. Right. Uh, Billy Ray Cyrus's story is unbelievable. They wanted to be a part of this, but while he uh, was. Uh, abruptly asked to leave college for behavior. Okay. <laughs> he stopped at an old gentleman's car was apparently broken down. And he and then the gentleman gave him his car. He was a Dr. Bailey. And he said, you seem like a nice young man stopping to help someone. He said, that was, come by my office. said, I'd like to talk to you. And he lectured and gave him Think and Grow Rich. Oh. Read the, Billy Ray Cyrus read the book. And he said, uh, it was like a boy spoke to him and said, Billy Ray, buy you a guitar and start you a band. And he wrote a whole chapter on uh, persistence. Right. How important it was to have an idea and stick with it. And in his book, uh, Hillbilly Heart, he talks of which we did not publish, but it's a good book. He talks about uh, playing for $50 a night, playing in rough places, right. fights and nightclubs. But he said he stuck at it and stuck with it and of course the girls all know he come out with that song achy breaky heart right they like to dance to and of course as they would say in, in the industry the rest of it was history <laughs> you know well, even tells in the book how little miley cyrus got her name he nicknamed her smiley but when she went in show business they dropped the s and she come miley cyrus oh good story sounds like a very intriguing story good story i enjoyed it but that book is published uh, by uh, by Sound Wisdom. The ne the the, uh, the next one I will talk about is one of Jim Stovall's books. Jim Stovall's a, a dear he's friend. He's amazing. He's amazing. 
Uh, he's the most, most outstanding people I've ever seen. And he'll tell you he's not handicapped, though he's been blind since college days. He's authored more than 40-some books. So far, we've published four of them. And uh, he's, ju he's just amazing. One of his books called Hindsight, uh, that's not my publication, but he, he details 100 interviews, people he interviewed. And the list is amazing from everybody, from Donald Trump to Dalai Lama to you name it. If you reviewed that list, most of us that grew up watching television would probably recognize 90 out of 100 at least. And that's Carl Channing, Chuck Connors. I mean, the list is, goes on and on. Uh, the people that he's interviewed, Steve Forbes, Don Green, Peter Graves. It's, a, it's an impressive list, even if you mark me off of it. <laughs> But it's not my book, but I'm talking about Wisdom for Winners. Right. The column he's written for more than 20 years. I have never read a bad one. It comes out every Thursday. It's free. It's Jim Stovall's Wisdom for Winners. And he has amazing stories, insight. I've never read one of them and went away feeling bad. So he gave these to the foundation. And we've done four books out of them. Uh, they're all published by Sound Wisdom. And just recently, he sent me a piece. He's recently made a million-dollar donation to the oh, I saw, University for his I saw that. School of Entrepreneurship. And how many blind people do you know that's able to make a million-dollar donation to the college that they attended? Just amazing, a gentleman. Yeah, uh, his, he is inspiring to me. Yeah. I mean, you listen to his story, and uh, it is absolutely amazing. Uh, uh, but by all means, he should be home listening to something that they can't watch nothing and right. welfare check and tell people how bad things are. But you don't tell him that he's handicapped because he does not consider his handicap. I believe eight of his books has been made into movies. Uh, Ultimate Gift, gross more than $100 million. And it's just, a, just amazing stories and insight he's able to give us. I don't, I don't know how he does it, but uh, he's, an, he's an amazing individual. Now, he was the speaker for Napoleon Hill Day one year, too, wasn't he? He was, yeah. He was, he was absolutely amazing. The fact is, I've recorded that. He gave me permission. I've not marketed it yet, but uh, uh, his story is as good as one as I've ever heard. And, uh, oh, I agree. Yeah, he's, uh, he just, uh, he's just an absolutely amazing individual. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to work with him. And he's, a, and he's a product of Think and Grow Rich. He, he read it as he's losing his eyesight. He was mentored by a guy named Lee Braxton. Lee Braxton's an interesting story himself. He, he dropped out of school to help his family during the Depression. He went in business, came rich, founded a bank, and gave most of his money away. And he uh, retired when he was about 48 years old. And, uh, but he's a connection. Lee Braxton was a good friend of Napoleon Hill. And he delivered Napoleon Hill's eulogy when he died in 19, uh, 1970. And we have that speech in writing. I've never heard published it yet, but we have that talk in print that Lee Braxton uh, oh, gave wow. Hill's, uh, Hill's eulogy. So that, that's the connection. But wow. uh, these books are published by Sound Wisdom and Amazon and four books or so. Nice little, nice little books. Good columns. Absolutely. Now, there's four of those, right? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought, four. There's a total, there's a total of four of them. And he's, uh, he's well known in the foreign countries also. I never had nobody read one of his books and say he's disappointed because it's heartwarming, good, positive information. Right. And uh, just a pleasure to, to read them. Incredible and authentic. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's absolutely true. Uh, I, I don't want to quote how many books uh, he does, but he's done thousands of books. He does them on an accelerated speed listening device. Right. And uh, I don't I don't know of a worthwhile book that I could even imagine mentioning that he's not already read it. Oh, wow. Uh, and think, <laughs> think it's funny. He appears in a lot of his m movies as a side. Right. And he plays a part of a chauffeur usually. He's our sit, stand beside the car or whatever and got all sunglasses. And yeah. he, <laughs> as he I think it's funny, but uh, he's incredible, the knowledge he's acquired. 
I mean, you just imagine talking to a hundred different people and, and doing a, interviews from people from the sports field to the financial field to the political field, the religious, uh, you, just just the very people that uh, he's in touch with. Him. Right. And what's amazing to me is you you can pick you can pick up one of his books, and he won't kill me for this, but. Uh, he, you know, every book that I've read of his, and I think I operator want to get a hold of, Jim Stovall can be reached at 918-627-1000. And, uh, and uh, I will guarantee you, if you'll call, and he's there, he's a heavy demand speaker booked up for you. You're 20 year or two years ahead of time. But if he's in the office, he'll speak to you. And if you do, tell him. Don Green said call. <laughs> but thank you. Uh, That's very admirable. I, I have, a, I have a, a book just recently published in December. Uh, it's the it's first writings of Napoleon Hill. It's called Truth of Living by my good friend Jeffrey Gidmore. Now hold it up so we can see the whole cover. Yeah. <laughs> this is published by Amazon. It's been heavily promoted. I've already had lots of inquiries and done some publications in a foreign country. As you know, Jeffrey wrote the little Red Sales Bible, which I think is a million dollar seller. He's, right. he's one of the most outstanding sales trainers in the U.S. or anywhere. He's in heavy, heavy demand. He'll tell you he's not cheap, but he's well worth it. And he's a he's a terrific writer and speaker and sales trainer. He wrote the little Red Sales book, Bible on selling and the Yes uh, Attitude book. He's wrote numerous books. And this one, he'll have lessons he gave people to train them in 1917. It was a, it was a Washington college. And uh, we had those lessons. He would just make copies of them and give them to the employees. We had to complete set of them. And Jeffrey took them and he, he, he commented on them and put it together. And, and I, I love the way the little books laid out. It's full of, it's full of Hill quotes. Uh, but yeah, I love the breakout quotes. Those are yeah, nice. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, uh, He'll have a full-page quote from Napoleon Hill, but anywhere Je Jeffrey has quoted, his name appears by it. So you won't have any trouble telling what Napoleon Hill quoted and what uh, Jeffrey did work. But it, they did a good job of the breakouts and, lay and the layouts and the quotes and all. It's just, a, it's just a real, real easy book to read, and it's some terrific information. And uh, I said and this was in 1917. Wow. The lessons were 1917. We actually, all, all we, we had was, we had Hill's copies, and the lessons were numbered 1 through 32. And uh, Gittermore took them. Of course, you had to put them in, in uh, manuscript form. Hey, yes, that was even more of that for me. I didn't notice. <laughs> but uh, good good book, uh, available on Amazon, of course, because right. Amazon published it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was published by Amazon. Uh, right. It's uh, and they've spent a lot of money uh, promoting promoting the book, and and Jeffrey he guarantees that it will be a bestseller because he's a he's a terrific uh, promoter. He's a terrific uh, promoter. Very good. Oh, I saw on the front it had your name. He written Dawn. <laughs> Here's a little book. You just go to Amazon and see the ratings on it. This book come out in the fall. Uh, Hold it I got up a, just a little bit more for us. I got a call. From, you see it? Yep. Beautiful. I got a call from the publisher, and they said, we would like you to condense Think and Grow Rich. And uh, they said, Think and Grow Rich condensed. I said, no, we, you, we're only going to be talking about five principles, and so we don't want to confuse people. We'll call it the five essentials. It's published as the five essentials of thinking grow rich. It's actually a gift book. I think this is the perfect book for new students getting ready to graduate, whether they're high school, whether they're college, because it's such an easy read. Absolutely, and, it, long and it's got those breakout quotes and pictures and attention span is not as tends to decrease due to the social media, you know. I mean, how many times a day do we even grown-ups look at our cell phone? I right. Mean, that's scary. Uh, but this <laughs> published by Simple Truth, and the thing earned its, it earned its, uh, 
the first report it earned its uh, its advance out. So I even called them. I said, uh, I asked them why, and they said, you can't believe how it sold. I said, we had people buying them by the bundles to give their employees because it's close, Christ close Christmas time. But here's the part that I considered. I considered chapter one, desire, the starting point of all achievement. Chapter two, imagination, workshop of the mind. Chapter three, persistence, the sustained effort necessary to produce success. Chapter four, power of the mastermind, driving force and gaining power to the mastermind. Chapter five, how they outwit the six ghosts of fears. And it's, it's, it's absolutely laid out just beautiful. Uh, he's, got, uh, uh, he's, he's got the old uh, orange kettle. We know the story of Coca-Cola. Right. Uh, put the ingredients in the thing. Of course, there's one of the old timey doll. Tell oh, you have to hold it up. Can't sit, hold it up. Yep. <laughs> I remember those. <laughs> and these are, these are two pages of uh, uh, picture Booger T. Washington. And uh, just, just, uh, just, the, just the layout of it. Uh, a quote. Yeah. Ladder of success is never crowded at the top. They use that term magic ladder to success a lot in his uh, writings. But they, it's, it's crammed full of uh, it's crammed full of uh, pictures. Uh, ours, Andrew Carnegie's group of, of masterminds, uh, an old, an old uh, black, black and white picture. Here's the Wright brothers. Oh, yeah. We have a newspaper clipping. It says a young cub reporter by the name of Napoleon Hill uh, covered the flight for one of the Washington papers. He actually rode the plane. He said from Alexandria, I think it's about a 10 mile flight. But uh, uh, and he's got a quote by this plane. It says, the greatest achievement was at first and for a time, a dream, James Allen. He, uh, that, that quote was used. And, uh, you know, because it brings us back to that, the, 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 about almost the exact same time that this first flight was, I read a story, I believe the professor was from Princeton. He published a paper, why heavier than our, heavier than our flight was not possible. And then a week or so later, <laughs> the right flew. so it's it's that one of my favorite sayings is, it's only impossible until somebody does it. Right. Everybody can do it, and nothing like a four minute mile, which is we publish in a uh, audio with Brian's audio, and uh, the four minute mile was four minutes plus is four minutes and fifteen seconds by Scotsman. And, it stood from 1892 till in the 50s, I believe it was 54. Roger Bannister, a young medical student, he actually broke the four minute mile, which the doctor said couldn't be done and so forth and so on for health reasons, you know, too much strain on the heart. But today I think about 400 people at least has done it, even a 16 year old high school has done it because once someone did it, people realize it's possible. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's important. Uh, and uh, that applies to anything else is it's only impossible until somebody does it. Oh yeah, I knew yeah. that all the time. You know, so it's a it's a very good lesson. It's a neat little book. It's, yeah, it's a hard bag. Yeah, I love that book. Great That's one of my favorites. Favorite. <laughs> In fact, is I'm working on another one. Yeah, I'm working on another. There'll be something similar to it, but um, uh, it, it'll be published with a, a, a publisher before long. But this is from Simple Truths. And uh, I took 15 of them to the book fair in October and uh, Germany, and I gave them out, and they could sit there and look at it. I think out of those 15, I would really be the close 12 or 13 foreign contracts selling them the foreign rights, because right. we own foreign rights. But the last one was Korea. We'll get good advances on the books. People have just loved the little book. Yeah, it's great. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Here's one of my here's one of my guys. Um, this is Power of Mastermind. It's by Mitch Hortwich. He used to be assistant editor at one of the leading publishers. And this is one this one is published by Gildan Publishers. And of the writers out there, Mitch probably understands Napoleon Hill's writings and has been involved in them. Uh, one of the one of the top ones. Of course, he's a he's a he's a best selling uh, he's a best selling author. It's a it's a rather it's a rather small book in a in a sense, but um, uh, the 
the mastermind is critical. I don't know. I don't know of anybody that's been truly successful without help from other people. Right. Uh, because of, uh, and he gives perfect definitions from Hill's writings of the power of the mastermind. Uh, it's amazing what two or three people can sit down and uh, and 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 Hill was one of the first people to ever promote the idea of the mastermind. He says it came from Andrew Carnegie, and of course we know Andrew Carnegie was a as a young boy had a very elementary school education, but he was able to work with other people. He hired the best chemists, the best attorneys, the best accountants, right. and, and he was capable of doing very little, knew nothing about steel making, but he accumulated people together and combined the companies, and everybody thought he was going to create a monopoly and raise the prices. He, could, he kept cutting the prices, cutting the prices, cutting the prices, and made steel much more usable because he acquired better ways of doing things and mass producing, and uh, and of course, made him the richest man in the world, even though he only had a part of a part of a grade school education. But he credited to the people that he was able to to gather together, and he called them his uh, mastermind group. And if one of them didn't fit in and harmonize with the other ones, he was he was let go. And that happened to him with his head chemist. He had trouble working with other people. So, uh, you, it, and that's working in in a agreement of harmony. That's really the definition, working towards a common goal. That's really the definition of a uh, mastermind group. Right. And that's a very popular topic now. You see it in Forbes and oh, yeah. all yeah. these magazines, people talking about it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's very important. And, and even create Mahatma Gandhi. You know, they said he created, he also said he created a large, because he got the people of India to believe in a common cause, which was freedom from uh, Great Britain, Mm -hmm. They're what you want to call them. They was in charge, God knows, over a hundred years, and uh, they was able to free themselves from the bonds of the uh, of United Kingdom or what you want to call England without firing one shot. They did not have to revolt and have a war. He just banded them all together, and they was all the whole population of India practically. They saw the need and the desire to be a free country, and it came about without civil war. Well, thanks, Don. That's that's quite a few publications you shared with us. That's awesome. Oh, gosh, we, we got plenty of them. And hey, there's my book. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> Hold it up there. Let's see it. Yes. Everything I know about success, I learned from Napoleon Hill by Don. It's, it's in Dawn. 15 foreign language. It's in, on audio by, I wouldn't mean to promote it, it's at me laying here. It's also on uh, audio by Brian's, uh, Brian's audio. And I think I've done it in 15 foreign countries. And probably haven't promoted it like I much like I like I should, but I'll start was, promoting it more. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was fun doing because I had a goal in mind. All the money of it goes to scholarships at here at the University of Virginia, Wise, right, where our office is located, and uh, we're helping a lot of young folks go to college, and that's a pleasure. That's the reason we do what we do. That's all part of giving back. Yep, it is. <laughs> more blessed to give than to receive. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing this information today, Don. We've given people a whole lot of things to think about and some ideas for if they've got upcoming graduates or they've got people that maybe are starting a new job or birthdays. So many different books you could give to actually help propel their success. Give them something to think about. Have that positive mental attitude. Ab absolutely. And just right. remember what Mark Twain said, those people that don't read are no better off than people that cannot read. You're right. You're absolutely and I, right. And I wasn't to be a part of this, but I have some mentors, people uh, that I admire greatly. And I was just thinking one day, just thinking down who the name, five of them down. And you know what they all had in common? They were all avid readers. And right. some people that you wouldn't even realize, some people locally wouldn't. And I don't mean just people in money, though money is a good measure that you've done something worthwhile, uh, more than likely, because when I would ask them in class here at the University of Virginia, uh, they would, I'd ask them, what do you consider a successful person? And they said, most always, well, the answer was people have made a lot of money, but you can't really use just money, though it's a pretty good guide, because you can make a lot of money selling drugs. So it's it's some making money and putting it to a use that will make a difference uh, in the world. Uh, 
that that is. But uh, uh, people that accomplish a lot, they're avid readers. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I think that's going to wrap us up for this time. And I guess we will see everybody next time around on Kill Speak Radio and podcasts, right? So thanks so much for joining us, Don. We'll see everybody later. Thank you. Thank you.